Today, the federal cabinet is introducing an order in council, and it will require Canadian National and Canadian Pacific Railways to move a minimum quantity of Western regulated grain each week. For each of the railways, this amount is 500,000 metric tons per week, which represents over 5,500 cars each. Welcome to the show. Today, Ottawa announced that it will force railways to end the grain glut on the prairies. The combination of a bumper crop and extremely cold weather have resulted in a 60,000 rail car backlog for grain shipments just this year. The National Farmers Union says that could add up to $3.5 billion in lost sales. Now, the government is demanding that Canadian Pacific and Canadian National Railways increase shipments to 5,500 cars a week or face being fined 100,000 bucks a day. So will this order fix the grain backlog? Is the government unfairly targeting the private rail companies? And what legislation does the government have planned to fix the problem down the road? Joining me now to talk about this, Pierre Lemieux. He is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Agriculture, Liberal Deputy Leader Ralph Goodale, and in Toronto, Malcolm Allen, the NDP's agriculture critic. Hello, gentlemen. Good to see you all. Hello. Okay, I'm going to start Hello. with the opposition this time, if I can. Malcolm Allen, do you think the announcement today uh, about the idea of penalties and increasing the quotas, the, the targets that railway companies has to meet, do you think it's going to fix the problem? Well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. They've, they've, the, the government, I believe, has actually said they, they've given the rail companies four weeks to actually ramp the service up. So out of the 90 days that they've actually enforced it for, they're going to lose the first one-third. Um, the rail companies have actually said that when the weather gets better, we can probably do 5,500 cars a day each anyways. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't look like they've actually pushed them beyond what the rail companies said they would get to when they finally got to the good weather. Um, the compensation issue is a, you know, finding the rail companies uh, certainly should have an effect. The issue is where's the money going to go? If it's going into the, governor co the government's coffers, clearly farmers don't benefit from that. Um, farmers need to be compensated. We have a lot of wheat uh, stuck in the prairies. Um, some of the estimates I've seen from grain companies are suggesting even at 5,500 cars per day per each railway, they may still have a 23,000, uh, 23 million ton mm -hmm. uh, carryover into the next year where they normally only have five. So it's still a huge backlog. They're not actually clearing the backlog. They're just simply emptying out what's in the, uh, the elevators now so that they can get refilled by what is really ostensibly a backlog on the farm of, uh, of the Western Prairies. Okay, Ralph Goodell, do you think it will make a difference in the immediate for farmers? Well, all they're asking the railways to do is what the railways have already committed themselves to do. They appeared before the parliamentary committee about three or four weeks ago uh, and basically said they could, they could do this. So it's business as usual. It's nothing incremental. It's no stretch. It's no reach. Uh, it's backed up with an order in council. We've been urging the government to act under Section 47, the emergency power section of the, of the uh, CTA. Uh, they've finally done that, but mm -hmm. they, the, the action that they're asking of the railways is just, is just so small uh, that uh, it's, it's not going to appreciably relieve the situation from what would have happened anyway because the plan always but, has been wait for spring. But could they have asked for more? Though? They certainly could have, and they should have asked for it uh, back in, in December when, when it was obvious that this crisis was breaking. And now they, they, they say there'll be four weeks to ramp it up. Mm -hmm. That puts you in the middle of May, that, or middle of April. That puts you exactly when the municipalities will be putting the road bans on, on uh, heavy truck traffic on uh, all the rural roads in a province like Saskatchewan. So farmers will once again have the problem of getting the grain to the elevator because they can't move the, uh, move the, the, the grain over their own local yeah. grid road. Okay, Pierre Lemieux, why not go further then? If this is what the rail companies said that they can do, and indeed that's what they're saying today, uh, why not try and push them a little further to clear the backlog faster? Right, so uh, first of all, this let me back up to yesterday's show where I said our, our government uh, knows what this problem is and we're taking action uh, on behalf of farmers. And uh, I also indicated that the railways were underperforming and underdelivering with respect to uh, farmers and moving their grain uh, to port. Uh, today's announcement uh, tackles this on two fronts. It talks about an order in council. We're not talking so much about cars as tonnage because different cars carry different yep, sure. uh, weights of grain. So we're talking about uh, 500,000 tons uh, that we want the railways uh, to move per week and this is going to increase significantly to more than double than what they move today. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's pushing the railways. They're going to have to more than double what they have been moving in terms of grain to port. I would say that that is a, a, a bar for them to achieve. Okay. And of course with the order and council and with the penalties that are part of that order and council process uh, the railways need to respond to this uh, 
Let me just also say yeah. there's also the legislative portion. Yes. Uh, when we come back, legislation will be tabled to make the necessary changes, uh, additional changes as well. You, you, you could say that this has been going on for quite some time, yeah. months in Five fact, months. and now we are at the stage where uh, the weather is getting better um, and it is going to be easier for railways to move this stuff anyway. Why did it take so long for the government to provide this action given that you, know, you say it makes sense? There's a lot of consultation that needs to go on and I use the word consultation because there are a lot of players in the logistics supply chain. There are the elevators, there are the farmers themselves, um, there are the ports, there's definitely the railways yeah. sort of at the crux of it all. There has been active consultation and active negotiation with uh, the the stakeholders and the. But didn't the ministers only meet with the railways last week? No, 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 no. The, the oh times. yes, yes. Minister Rich has been meeting with the railways and other stakeholders uh, several times, and um, certainly he's been in weekly meetings with stakeholders. Now, what I'm saying though is that. Um, with the logistic system, there are many moving parts in the logistic system, and whatever solution is proposed, although it has to push for improvement, and I'm talking about more than twice mm -hmm. uh, the, the delivery capacity through the railroad, so that's very important, um, it also has to be within the bounds of achievable, because if it's not, if you, if you just legislate higher and it cannot happen, uh, that doesn't help anybody. Okay. So this consultation yeah. must take place so that the problem is well understood by all of the players and so that there's, there's collaboration in achieving this common goal of moving grain to port. Okay, let, let's talk about the long term then. Uh, I, the government is saying that you're going to look at some legislation. Let's get some perspective on what should be in that then, Malcolm Allen. What has to change so that this doesn't happen again? I realize there was sort of a perfect storm here, but it could happen again and what has to change so that it won't? Well, clearly the, uh, the service contracts that the railroaders actually get into uh, has to have teeth in it so that uh, if they don't actually perform to the, the, the level that they say they will, that the, the compensation goes directly back to the farmer uh, because they're the ones that actually are hurt at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, presently, we're not doing that. Um, even under the old the legislation that they wrote last year that um, there was amendments put forward that suggested that's exactly what should happen. Farmers and the grain handling companies said that's where the fines should go back to, that uh, if you don't perform, that actually you, you penalize the, the, the railway. The money goes back to those who are actually suffering from, from uh, the lack of service. You know, and the irony of, uh, you know, and, and uh, Pierre is talking about, you know, well, we've known and we've been talking. Uh, the reason we were asking them to act was this is not a new issue. You know, as uh, Chuck Strahl said back, uh, you know, at least four or five years ago when he was minister, this is the same excuse. So we saw the same excuse happening in this year. Yeah, it's a bit colder this year than it was before, and it was a bumper crop. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, if you look at the numbers, the, the rail companies used to move more grain back in the 90s than they do now. So this ad idea that somehow they're, they're doing this uh, remarkable job is, uh, is just not true. And the fact that they're, you know, they're, they're going to double what they're doing now, that's because they're 50% 50 50 below what they're doing, they normally should be doing. So uh, they're literally getting back to where they should be. And so at the end of the day, um, as I said earlier, uh, 23 million tons is the pr projected carry out into the next crop year, so, which okay. is basically four times higher than what it was before. And that for farmers means they're going to carry that cost because they're not going to get paid for so, that. So you want to you want to increase targets and and put the penalties into legislation, from what I can understand. Absolutely. There. Yeah. The Ralph, the what, 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 that, what do you think makes sense? Well, this, uh, first of all, the emergency action needed to be taken, but it's far too little and it's far too late, and it doesn't require the railways to do anything more than they would otherwise have done in any event. For the longer term. But it does force them to be fair. It well, well there's, 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 there's a fine, but they've already said a month ago that they would reach this target that the government has now imposed on them a month from now. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it, it, it's no material gain from the status quo, the uh, business as usual. The, what, what needs to be done for the long term mm -hmm. is what we were proposing in amendments to Bill C-52, the, the railway service legislation, uh, over a year ago. And that is put in the law a definition of what service levels are required, Put in the law a way you 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 measure whether the whether the targets have been reached or not, right. and then and then if the railways fall short, there are liquidated damages, not penalties paid to the government, liquidated damages paid by the railways to farmers. Mm -hmm. So that if they cause the demurrage charge, if they cause uh, the other costs and and uh, and disruption in yeah. the system, the railways pay and not the farmer. That's the problem with the legislation yeah. now. There is no way that the farmer has any clout in the equation. It's all with grain companies and railways. And until you change that equation, farmers will always get the short end of the stick. And, and is that a possibility? Because that is one of the things you're hearing right now is they don't have enough liquid assets, right? And this does really nothing to address that 
that uh, in the short term, is it something that you will might foresee in the long term, that, that somehow there has to be access to money faster if these penalties have to be put in place? Right. So, so let, me, let me answer that question by saying um, I can't comment on what legislation will actually be put in front of Parliament because it has to be put in front of Parliament. Oh, I understand, first. but surely yeah. you have ideas about what needs to be fixed long term, right. just like and, everybody and else does. What I can does. tell you is all options are on the table when it comes to legislation. Um, and I can assure you that uh, once we return, that legislation will be tabled. What farmers have seen today is that we have acted on behalf of farmers. We've acted in the past. That's why farming and agriculture is doing so well in Canada. And we're going to be acting again legislatively. Okay, I'm going to leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Appreciate you coming in. Thanks. Thank you very Thank much. You. The rail companies have just responded to the government's announcement. Canadian Pacific is disappointed with the move. Here's part of what they told us. CP believes the actions of the federal government raise more questions than answers and only focuses on the railways and not the entire supply chain. Our well, railway rather, has continued to move record amounts of grain. And despite this unfortunate order in council, Canadian Pacific is committed to matching the record volumes we moved in the fall, which will align with the order. And CN Railway called the government's decision ill-advised and seriously counterproductive. Their statement says the following, CN will do its part to meet the challenge of moving this 100-year uh, year record grain crop. Our assessment shows that an upper limit of around 5,500 cars per week may be achievable, but only if all members of the supply chain work together closely.